Hey, Survivor. Welcome to episode 83 of the Vibrant Survivor podcast. Today, we're covering a challenging situation that you may have faced or may be currently facing. Being triggered by the narcissist in court. If this is your situation, I'm so sorry this is happening to you. I've been there and I get it. I was there this week, as a matter of fact. So I'm sharing seven trauma-informed suggestions to help you navigate these intense moments. But first, let's begin by self-regulating with a 448 breathing exercise, if you'd like. We're going to inhale for four, hold for four, and exhale for eight. Remember, the magic is in the exhale. Ready? Inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Notice how that feels. Grab your notebook and pen and let's dig in. Hey, Survivor. Welcome to the Vibrant Survivor Podcast. Do you want to disconnect from a narcissistic or toxic situation and heal? Are you Googling how to identify a narcissist, narcissistic abuse, and boundaries? Are you feeling stressed and lonely while trying to avoid being sucked back in and lied to again? Hey, I'm Leslie. As a busy wife and mom, I fell for the lies and manipulations of narcissists. I wasted my time, talents, and money on users who kept moving the goalposts. I wanted real relationships and business opportunities and to enjoy life with my family. Instead, I struggled with anxiety, panic attacks, and insomnia, and I couldn't trust my body or anybody until I took a holistic approach to healing. In this podcast, you'll find tips for healthy living, trauma healing, and boundaries so that you'll have the freedom, confidence, and inner peace to respond, not react, after narcissistic abuse. Take a deep breath in. Let it out slowly just relax this time's for you. The fear is real when it comes to processing your experience. I know you feel stressed and exhausted with a pit in your stomach at the thought of being sucked back in and lied to again. You feel like a horrible person for going no or low contact, like maybe I'm the narcissist. The fear, self-blaming, and shaming is something we all go through as survivors. I want you to understand that you're not alone and you're not crazy. Every person who's ever been in a narcissistic relationship has felt what you're feeling right now. If this resonates with you and you're like, I'm done with fear, I'm done playing small, I know who I am, and I am not the narcissist, I want you to say yes. Today's the day. I want you to go right now to closeyourcoachingsession.com and I want you to book your call because we're going to do this together. I'm going to hold your hand and we're going to overcome this fear so that you can begin a long-lasting journey of healing. Let's do this. This week, I went to a court hearing to support a friend of mine whose child was the victim of an attack by other teens in our community. Teen violence is happening everywhere. The kids are not okay. And in this case, one of the assailants who pleaded guilty was being sentenced for his crime. So I joined my friend along with a couple of other friends of ours on the victim witness side of the aisle in the courtroom while the assailant and his mother sat on the opposite side. And even though this wasn't my case personally, I was among friends and I'd prepared myself to support my friend, I was still triggered in court. Yep. And I wasn't just triggered in my friend's case, as if the narcissistic smirking, mocking, and apparent boredom by the defendant and his mother wasn't enough. I was also triggered by the hearing before that. The graphic details of this other guy's crime sent shockwaves through my body that I did not see coming, and it brought me to tears. So in order to be fully present for my friend, as I had promised him, I had to dig deep in the moment into my toolbox to navigate the situation. And I did. 
Here are seven suggestions to help you navigate narcissistic triggers in court. Number one, nourish your body and brain. Eat real foods and hydrate. You're going to want to get the most bang for your buck in terms of nutrients for your body and brain with the food that you eat. You're going to want foods high in antioxidants to prevent rust of your brain. You're also going to want to eat things that are going to prevent blood sugar spikes like slow release carbs and also things that are going to promote healthy blood flow. And for hydration, a simple formula that you can apply would be to take your body weight and divide that by two, and that'll give you an approximate number of ounces of water that you should be drinking on a daily basis. Now, with that being said, you're going to want to take into consideration things like the climate that you're in or workouts. You may need to consume more. Just a guide. In general, you want to focus on whole foods with an emphasis on plant-rich eating with a rainbow of colors, staying away from processed or fake foods, and maybe as a rule of thumb, focusing on items that are 10 ingredients or less with no or low additives. Number two, tap into a higher power. Take the opportunity to grow your God Center if you'd like. This can help you to put things into perspective, whether it's the case or the narcissist or sentencing. It may help you to stress less and feel less alone, can help you to feel supported and give you some hope. You can do meditation. I love the Calm app for that. You can even meditate on Proverbs or other verses of scripture if you'd like. You can read spiritual books, you can pray, or connect with supporters who can support you spiritually. This could be a congregation, or a small group, or a spiritual partner, or other friend who you respect spiritually that gets it and that can help you in that way. Number three, get grounded in the present. You can try grounding techniques when you are feeling overwhelmed, and this can help you to focus on the now. This can be accomplished by things like the breathing exercise that we did at the beginning of this episode. You can do a room scan. I've mentioned that before. I had a therapist who guided me through a room scan, and it really helped me to calm down in the moment and to focus on the present and not get carried away or swept away by things that might happen or things that happened in the past. You may need a helping hand. I did this week when we were listening to the sentencing of this guy who went before my friend's case. I just got triggered and I was visibly upset and one of our friends who was sitting next to me saw me and she noticed that I was just really getting emotional. And my friend reached over and grabbed my hand and I let her. I had already launched into the breathing exercise that we did at the beginning of this episode. And that helped. On top of that, my friend reached out, grabbed my hand and squeezed it. And just that touch brought me back to the present moment and help to calm me down. Literally a helping hand really was the the extra support that I needed in that moment to be able to get grounded. Number four, have supporters with you. These are trusted, like-minded individuals who know you and who understand the situation, can validate you, maybe even have certain areas of expertise that can be helpful to you while you're in court. And it doesn't have to be your attorney. Wellness expertise or being trauma-informed. There were two of us there with him that were trauma-informed who understood the impact of the situation on his body, brain, emotions, and just the magnitude of the moment. And we were able to rally around him more effectively and be able to provide even more support than just being a body in a seat, which he was great with, but it was great that we were able to provide more. Supporters can stand up 
and step in when you need that emotional support or other assistance. They can sit with you like we did with our friend. They can literally separate you from the narcissist. If you need to step outside the courtroom, they can step outside with you or they can wear colors or bring things that can encourage and empower you in that setting. We did all of these things, actually. We sat with our friend. We literally provided a barrier between him and the assailant and his the assailant's mother. We, at one point, one of our friends stepped outside the courtroom with him. They were playing the video of his child's assault and he didn't want to be present and listen to that it was just too hurtful too triggering for him and so he he just was feeling a lot emotionally and so at one point he looked at us and said I gotta get out of here I'm leaving I'm gonna step outside the courtroom and I'll be right back or I'll be back in a few minutes and one of our friends followed him out went with him So he was able to kind of guide him to a place where he could have some space, some distance, some quiet, and just get grounded, refocus, and pull himself together and return to the courtroom ready for the next thing. And we also wore his child's favorite colors to court. And I had asked him previously, I said, you know, what would be encouraging to you? Can we wear something in particular? What do you think? Can we bring something, carry something that might help? And he's like, no, 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 your presence is enough. Well, I had scrolled through some messages that um, we had exchanged. And I saw that he had mentioned to me previously uh, that his child's favorite colors were red and blue. And so... I planned my outfit accordingly. I made sure that I had blue on and that I had a little hint of red. I don't own a lot of red, but I found something that had red in it that I could have as an accent. So I just planned my whole outfit around that. And one of our other friends who was going had messaged me and said, hey, what are you wearing to court? And I told her, I said, oh, his child's favorite colors are red and blue, so I'm going to wear this, 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 and this. And she said, oh, you know what? I will too. I'll find something. So she found like an an all red piece that made a very powerful statement. And it was interesting because the other friend that went to court uh, wore all blue. So between the three of us that were sitting with him, we had a lot of red and blue on. So that he had that visual encouragement And it was a great way, too, to kind of channel his child uh, because he was not present in the courtroom and to just represent. Number five, create safe distance. You can create safe distance in court from the narcissist and their associates or enablers in order to minimize the visual and emotional impact of being in close proximity to them, and also to diffuse any potential drama. You can sit as far away as possible. You can even use your supporters as a buffer, which we did that. And maybe even sit in order of least to greatest proximity to the case. And that way it kind of provides like human insulation that can help to keep things fairly neutralized. And we did that and that was really helpful. Number six, step outside the courtroom. You can quietly remove yourself from the courtroom if you need to. This can help to reduce or eliminate overwhelm from the case and any triggers that may come from being in close proximity to the narcissist, like I was sharing. It's important for you to prioritize your health and well-being. Yes, there's a timetable. Yes, there's business at hand here. Yes, there's sentencing that needs to happen. Yes, there are statements that need to be read, evidence that needs to be heard, etc. But your health and well-being has got to be your priority. And if you need to step outside for a minute, like my friend did, then that's what you need to do. 
You can exit the courtroom, have somebody go with you like my friend did, take time out to breathe, gather your thoughts, get grounded, and then return when you're more calm. And that's okay. Number seven, express your feelings in an impact statement. You can include the emotional, psychological, physical, financial, spiritual impact, and any other impact of the narcissist's behavior in an impact statement. This is a chance for you to be seen and heard, to articulate the impact of their behavior on your life, to possibly influence sentencing, even if it's just a little bit, or to influence even other defendants who may be present in the courtroom waiting for their turn to be sentenced. It can help to empower other victims. We saw this happen in court this week where the judge was visibly moved by my friend's articulation of what happened to his child and how he felt about it and how it's impacted his life. And you could just see that the judge was moved. You could just tell she had a, a lot of empathy. We also noticed that one of the defendants that was waiting for sentencing was seemed to be moved by our friend's impact statement, even though it had nothing to do with his case. These guys were listening while they were waiting their turn. And when he was talking about what it meant to him to be a dad and how much he missed having his child with him and all the things, because he unfortunately had to relocate his child out of the country just to stop the bullying, harassment, and assault, which is terrible and ridiculous at the same time. So as he was sharing his heart as a father, one of the defendants who was waiting to be sentenced, you could just see that he was moved by the words. In addition to that, there was another parent who had to read an impact statement concerning this same assailant. And she had the benefit of my friend going first and just being more empowered to speak her truth lay it out, and we could see that too. So that was a beautiful thing to witness as well. Let's recap seven suggestions to help you navigate narcissistic triggers in court. Number one, nourish your body and brain. Number two, tap into a higher power. Number three, get grounded in the present. Number four, have supporters with you. Number five, create safe distance. Number six, step outside the courtroom. And number seven, express your feelings in an impact statement. Remember, when you're navigating narcissism in court, be strategic with your support. Thanks for tuning in, Survivor. And if you found this episode helpful, please share it with others who can benefit from this information. Take care, and I'll talk to you soon. If this podcast has helped you understand who and what you're dealing with, sharpen your discernment, and move forward on your healing journey, share it with another survivor. Help me help others by leaving a review for the show. And let's connect on social. Take a screenshot, share it in your IG stories, find and tag me at The Vibrant Survivor, and I'll share your post too. I look forward to connecting with you on IG and seeing you back here. You're not alone and you're not crazy. Know who you're dealing with, know who you are. Take care and I'll meet you back here next week. Bye-bye.